Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video, I'm gonna go over isotonic solutions. So let's get started. Isotonic IV solutions have the same osmolarity as the blood, so same concentration of solutes. And with these fluids, there's gonna be an equal transfer of water. So our cell is going to stay the same. Therefore, we can just use these fluids to expand extracellular fluid volume, hence our plasma. Now, why would we want to expand the extracellular fluid? Well, if the patient is experiencing a fluid loss in this space, like through vomiting, diarrhea, they need some sodium and chloride back, or they're experiencing hypovolemic shock, burns, or maybe they're going to be having surgery. And we know with surgery, they're you're going to be losing a lot of blood like that extracellular fluid. Now some fluids that are considered isotonic are normal saline, lactated ringer's solution also called LR, and 5% dextrose in water. Now there's an asterisk by this and I'll tell you about this fluid here in a second because although it is isotonic it does work as a hypotonic solution once administered. And some things you want to remember about isotonic solutions is that with normal saline this replaces places just water, sodium, and chloride. And it is the only solution we use to administer with blood. So you don't use any other solution, only normal saline. And with this type of solution, you have to watch out for fluid overload, especially in patients with kidney and heart failure because their heart and kidneys aren't working too great. And if we put too much fluid in there, they can become overwhelmed and we can actually put too much fluid back into the extracellular space. Therefore, you wanna monitor their blood pressure, make sure they're not hypertensive. You also want to check their breathing and check those lung sounds. Make sure that you don't hear any crackles, which could indicate pulmonary edema, where we've had fluid build up in the lungs. And then also look at their extremities, especially those lower extremities. Make sure there's no edema present. And because we are administering sodium and chloride, you want to also check those sodium and chloride levels. Make sure that they're not increasing because this fluid could cause that if we give too much. The next is 5% dextrose in water D5W. This solution replaces water and glucose. So as I pointed out earlier, it starts out as isotonic but ends up as a hypotonic solution. And why is this? Well, in the solution is dextrose. And when dextrose enters the body, it will be used up by the body, hence metabolize. But what's left over is not very concentrated. It's really just free water. So we have a low osmosis molarity and it becomes hypotonic. Therefore, because of the components of this fluid, it's not for fluid resuscitation situation. It can actually increase the blood glucose too high causing hyperglycemia, but it can help hypernutremia. That is where we have too much sodium in the blood. And what this fluid will do because it's hypotonic in the end, it can help in a sense water down that blood, hence decreasing our sodium level there. And then lastly, with LR, this solution contains water, potassium, sodium, chloride, calcium, and lactate. Now this fluid contains lactate and lactate can actually help increase the blood's pH by converting to bicarbonate, which is really helpful whenever we have acidotic conditions going on, like mild cases of metabolic acidosis. However, it's not for patients with liver disease because our liver converts lactate to bicarbonate or for patients who are experiencing lactic acidosis because already in the body there's a high amount of lactic acid so we don't want to go and add more and because this fluid contains potassium you would want to monitor for hyperkalemia high potassium level in the blood especially if your patient has some type of renal insufficiency okay so that wraps up this video if you'd like to watch more videos in this series you can access the link in the description below